I'm here with Alex Harold today. We're uh, cutting in one of the contest fields, and uh, we're going to just have a little chat about a few things. And Alex, uh, we're in the field here. Uh, what uh, drew you to some of the C Series soybeans, and what do you think has helped uh, encourage and increase your yield potential this year on uh, these Pioneer soybeans? Yeah, last year the Pioneer beans that we planted, we got the notice in, you know, in our high management practices just how big those beans were, were making, you know, size-wise, seeds per pound. That number was just getting really low, and um, the seed per pound on there, they were just like marbles coming out into the tank. <clears throat> so that was the one thing that really drew us to it, because for me, I feel like that's, in, in our scenario, that's the easiest way for us to bump yield up is, not to put more plants per acre or to have more pods per acre, but it's to make the ones we've got bigger. Um, so for us, I was drawn to the, to the Z-Series because we saw just how big those seeds could be. Um, even in a, a non-high management, just a standard production, they were substantially bigger than the, than the competitors, the other varieties that we had next to them. Alex, uh, I noticed your tagline on your truck is uh, little details make big yields. Uh, what are some of the things that go into making world record soybeans? Yeah, um, a lot of detail for sure. Um, like I was saying earlier, this combine pass we're making across this high yield bean field. From the time we planted cover crop last year until this pass now, I figured it up last night, this is our 32nd pass across this high yield field. So, um, and they're not just, you know, Obviously, we're putting a lot into this into this field more than just a standard production field. But we're not just blindly throwing product out, just dumping fertilizer. I mean, everything we do, there's a reason we're doing it. And it's based off of our tissue samples that we we pull every week. It's based off of variable rate <coughs> soil sampling that we do. It's not like we're just you know loading up the sprayer with fertility and just slinging random fertilizer out, and spraying random foliar fertilizers out. You know. We, we've got certain thresholds we want to keep on certain nutrients. We've got certain balances we want to keep between two different, three different nutrients. You know, it's all a system approach. Yeah. I tell people all the time, it's like baking a cake. It may take, you know, let's say 30 ingredients to make this cake. You can probably make that cake with 20 of them, but it's not going to be quite as good as if you had all 30 of them. And it's the same thing when it comes to these high yields. I mean, every little detail matters. From, you know, starting with lime in the fall all the way to, you know, minute molybdenum passes going out of the, the out of the foliar. You know, everything we do, there's a reason behind it, and it, we're not just blindly applying like a lot of people think. Alex, we're uh, driving across this field, and I see very little wheat pressure, maybe a drowned out spot in the foothold up there, but you know, tell us a little bit how, of what about your thoughts of the enlist system. Uh, going across these beans. Yeah, two of the main weeds we fight here in the south are pink weeds and uh, morning glories. And uh, we were able to wipe out both of those. You know, we put a good pre-emerge down also, but we always have escapes that we have to go after you know, post-emerge. And we were able to control those easily with the enlist system. You know, pair that with the liberty system that we can do both back to back together. You know, we can. there's not much out there that we can't knock out of those two herbicides. Alex, thanks for letting us ride along today and thank you for planting Pioneer Seeds. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.